name's David, and he's English. Before he was bombed out, his home was in Plymouth. Now he's on his way to the West, to the land of the American cowboy. On the subject of the West, David's an authority. From all he's read, from the movies he's seen, he knows just what to expect. subject of the West and cowboys, David certainly is an authority. That day when I met him at the station, I was a very unhappy host. I wish I could have presented him with the West he wanted to see, but David's kind of cowboys are all buried on Boot Hill. The first morning he was with us, my wife couldn't even get him to eat breakfast. He was out bright and early. You're on a cattle ranch, all right. The cowboys? Oh, they're here, David. That was one running the tractor. They're all working on equipment. I know it'd be more fun for you if they were shooting up desperados, but they're pretty busy with trucks and tractors. Cowboys have to be jacks of all trades to keep up a modern ranch. But that was no comfort to David. And with no cows in sight, he began to suspect that we were all frauds. So I had to explain to him that they were scattered all over the ranch. I told him that it takes 20 acres to keep one cow properly fed for one year. But David wasn't interested in one cow, so I told him about a lot of cows. I told him about the great beef herds which are spread out all over the West, eating their way across the plains of Montana, up the slopes of the Rockies and down into the deserts of New Mexico. When I was through, a cow was still just a cow to David, but a cowboy like Jimmy York was something else again. David perked right up when he met him. Jimmy happened to be the only cow hand around who carried a pistol, and a gun held the promise of Western adventure. From that moment on, Jimmy York acquired himself a partner. But even Jimmy turned out to be a disappointment, because all he was out to do was ride fence. I know, David, fixing fences isn't very exciting, like chasing cattle rustlers, but it's mighty important. You see, David, a ranch is just like an open-air factory. Fences separate the different departments. Fences, David, fences, miles of them all over the West. They aren't used just to keep one man's cattle from wandering over into another man's land. Fences separate cows so that they can't all congregate and eat one piece of land clean. Fences separate bulls from the herd, and sometimes calves from their mothers when the time comes to wean them.
Fences separate the land itself. The land that's feeding cows now from the land that's growing grass to feed them later. There's a whole science in grass that's part of a cow hand's job to know. And the government's given us a great deal of help on it. Field men check grasses for food value and find out where they'll grow best. And it's our job to grow and harvest and store the hay. So you see, the cowboy has to be a bit of a farmer, too, if he's going to have enough feed to get through the winter. None of it sounded adventurous enough for our young hero. So I told him about the adventure that comes with the snow. It's the winter that proves a man's worth on a ranch, David. The cow hands have to keep the herd moving along so they don't pile up and freeze to death. And so the cow hand turns nursemaid among his other chores. Man, it takes a seasoned campaigner to get himself and the stock through a winter out here. A cowboy's got to be tough. And he's got to be kind-hearted. And he's got to be patient. Yes, sir, David, it takes a lot of patience to ride the miles and miles of fence that you find on a ranch. I'm sorry we can't offer you more excitement. Or maybe we can. Don't move, David. time of year for taking inventory. And the most important workman on a ranch is a cow pony. Bred for work and for a burst of speed when it's needed. With strength enough to hold on to a half ton of roped steer. But good as a pony is, a cowboy needs a string of eight to a dozen of them. Coming along, David? It's about time you were formally introduced to the herd. Roundup's the time we get them all together and count noses to see what the crop is like. They're not all cows, you know, though that's what we call them. They're bulls, and those that start out as bulls and end up steers, they supply the beef. Then there's the new ones, the calves. On our place, we work from the main ranch house, clearing up one pasture at a time. On big ranches, the cow hands take to the range for maybe weeks at a time, living out of a chuck wagon. Meal times, they eat hearty. Appetites are sharp after 30 or 40 miles in the saddle. And a cook's got to be good. For most of these cowboys are used to home cooking. Yeah, a lot of them are married and live in their own homes when they're not out on the range. But as for us, David, on our own ranch, we are able to drive the herd directly to the home corral. That is, we drive most of them. Then we cut the cows into one pen and the calves into another for branding and inoculating. Wait a minute, there's one that the boys missed. Here's a chance to practice a little roundup by yourself. Oh, 
don't let it worry you, David. That happened to the best of us when we first started out. You go ahead and recuperate, and we'll get along with the job. Watch this carefully, David. I'd like you to see a really good crew of experts at work. Every calf has to be branded for identification, earmarked to show their age, and inoculated to keep them healthy. We used to have trouble with blackleg. Time was when it carried off 10% of the herd. We don't have it since we started to inoculate. There's a lot of doctor in a cow man. Medicine is one of the things he learns about in colleges like this. A rancher studies for his degree nowadays, like any other specialist. He learns what to put into a cow and what kind of a cow to put it into. There's the shorthorn, which came out of Scotland. Another Scotsman is the Aberdeen Angus. The breed of the white-faced Hereford owes much to an English bull named Anxiety IV. And the Brahmin bull of India is helping to produce a hardier breed in Texas. It's all part of a rancher's life, David, all this study and science. The result, the steer that goes to market today is healthy and carries more beef by a third than he did 25 years ago. The big fall drive to the loading station is an important moment, David. What you see here represents a year's work. The secret of the drive is not to push them too fast. We've got to save all the pounds we can. Took a lot of effort to build them up. We don't want to lose it now. Slow and easy, that's the ticket. This time of year, men are driving cattle all along the 2,000 mile front that we call the West. The cows come climbing over the passes, spreading across the flats and mesas, flowing down through the canyons, down along the arroyas, out of the gulches, out of the west, on the road to everywhere. Here we are, David. We were lucky, no mishaps. On a trip like this, the thing we fear most is a stampede. You never can tell what'll frighten a herd. I remember once when we were driving... Hey! There they go! Head off that herd! Get them circling! Well, that wasn't too bad. Could have been a lot worse. At least the herd didn't scatter, and we stopped them before too many pounds were run off. Give him a hand, David. That's a boy. Of course, I know it's not as exciting as shooting from the hip or chasing bank robbers down the side of a cliff, but take my word for it, it's a lot more important. There they go, the cowboy's contribution to the world. There's more than just beef on the hoof in those cars. There's leather. Need a new pair of boots, soldier? Helmet pilot, we're sending it. 
They're off to save lives, David. Need insulin, doctor? Here it is. Do you need shells, gunners? Fats for explosives, you bombardiers? It's coming out of the West. Dinner? Come and get it, soldier. You know, there's a new world building, David. But it can't be done on an empty stomach. Men everywhere are making plans so that kids like you, wherever they may be, will never have to go hungry. And the West is taking part in those plans. The cowboys you read about are all right in their place, but I know you won't mind if the real ones don't waste time shooting up saloons and stick to raising cows. All right with you, David? Good.